In this video, we're going to take a look at Organic Studios Foggy Bottom Sepia. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion. A very nice brown with just the slightest red lead in the writing. Now, the writing looks very different than the swatches, so don't always believe the swatches ever. Trust swatches? No, don't. Look at writing when you're looking at stuff online. You're going to get a much better look at it. Now, it shades very nicely, very gently in and out, making this a pleasure on the page. The sepia tone has a nice old world feel to it, which I always enjoy, and I can see easily using this on the regular if I owned a bottle. I have no issues with it whatsoever. It's really very nice on the page. I would say, though, if you're not a fan of brown inks, you're probably not going to like this. And in fact, I would say that you probably need to be a bit more a fan of brown inks to like using this. I can see this as a brown, a brown that most people aren't really going to go for. Even though it's really good, I see this as a great brown for fans of brown ink. I like it. I like to change things up by using a different pen each day. Today that pen is a Pelican M800 with a medium nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. To see how I arrived at that opinion, let's take a look at the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the fine nib, we see a very nice brown. It's got no feathers, got no spread. It does shade very well, which is one of the things that I very frequently like about browns is a lot of them shade incredibly well. This one does. It's not, for me, a perfect tone of brown in what I would go for. However, as I said, I can definitely see using this quite a bit. Looking at the medium, it is darker than we had with the fine. We get no feather, we get no spread. We do get a lot of very nice shading. You can see it all the way across. Really almost every word meant by, it's much more obvious. Motion, much more obvious. If, much more obvious. I'm really enjoying how this looks. And on this paper, it really does bring out more of that red tone than if I was using some different papers. I use this because of that very bright white background. Looking at the stub, we get no feather, we get no spread, we do get even more shading. It's more pronounced here than it was before. Really, as it gets thinner on the page, you're going to see more of that red tone that this ink has. Again, the very white background is pushing that red a bit more. Now, for me personally, I tend to go towards a cream paper or ivory. Yes, ivory. That's where it looks gorgeous. I just don't have any ivory writing samples. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding, no ghosting. 
To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Pilot Metropolitan with a fine nib. A Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib. A Pilot Metropolitan with a 1.0 stub. The next writing sample is done in a Field Notes Steno Notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we're getting much more of what is this brown. This is not as bright a white paper and really makes this brown look so much better. There's no feather, there's no spread, there's almost no shading that really happens. The absorbent nature of this paper really got rid of it, but the tone of ink that we wind up with on the paper is very pleasing. I can deal with not having shading when it has a great tone. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than we had with the fine. We get no feather, we get no spread. We do actually see some, I'm gonna say tone variation over shading, but if you see geometric or unmoving on the top line, you do see some tone difference between that and some of the words around it. But it's not so much shading in and out of words, just that it has tone variation more in words themselves. Looking at the stub nib, kind of ignore those first letters, only because um, I was having some issues and I had to really deal with the pen. The pen has been acting up and that was taking care of at this point. Now, we get a little bit of feathering that's going on. You really see it in enough. You see it in even. You see it in century. There is a little bit of spread going on. This is not the best performance for this ink. You do see tiny spots of shade happen, like on the word when or motion, so it is there. Looking at the back of the page, you do see, especially on the stub nib and a bit on the medium, some deep spots with the ink. It never came through and touched the page on the back side, so there's no bleeding. And the ghosting, I think, is fairly under control. You could probably use the back of the page. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The next writing sample is done in an Ampad Steno Notebook. Looking at the fine nib, this tone of the paper really has done well with this ink. We get no feather, we're getting no spread, we're not really getting shading, and I'm saying that as I'm looking at a couple areas that may kind of appear a little light. I'm not really gonna say that it's shading though. It's not, nothing that's stand out for this. The tone in the paper, though, a beautiful match. Looking at the medium nib, we get about the same tone that we had in the fine. Now, we get some feathering that's gonna go on, and any of the feathering is really tiny and very manageable but we're getting no spread. And we definitely see some shading going on. Just looking across the top line from objects, you see it gets lighter all the way through move and starts getting darker at at again and then very light into A. I think it's shading very nicely here. Kind of a surprise. Looking at the stub nib, it's the darkest tone on the page, without a doubt. We get no feather, but we do get a couple, I'm gonna say, moments where it's spread, like the word planets definitely has some spread. We are seeing some shading on the second line when you look at move at varying. You see some definite shading that's going on. I don't think this would really be a good uh, pen on this paper, though.
Looking at the back of the page, you see the ghosting is basically under control. Might not want to use the back of the page for the stub, but for the rest, ghosting isn't a problem, and it didn't bleed through and touch the page underneath. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. And here we see the results of the resistance test. The next writing sample is done in a national steno notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we again see the not pure white really does make this ink look so much better than a pure white paper. We get no feather, we get no spread, we get almost no shading, but you do see it show up, especially look at that third line. You see it in instant, you see it in shown, you see it in the fourth line in could, be. So it's doing very well, but this is always a good paper. Looking at the medium nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the fine. We get no feather, we get no spread. We do get some shading that's going on. You definitely see it. Look at how dark plotted starts and how much lighter it gets. Go to the second line and look at moves where it's going from lighter to darker. Getting goes lighter to darker. Absolutely beautiful combination here. Looking at the stub nib, it is about the same tone that we had with the medium. We get no feather, we get no spread. I do see more of the red lean from this ink on this. I think the stub quality of squeegeeing the ink around really thinned it enough to make it come out. Not my favorite, but I then wouldn't use a stub with this ink knowing that it can do that. Looking at the back of the page, we had no bleed through that touched the page underneath, and the ghosting is way, way under control, so you have no problem using the back of the page. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Diamine Espresso. Here is KWZ Iron Gall Mandarin. Here is KWZ Old Gold. Here is Private Reserve Chocolate Fast Dry. The next writing sample is done in an Office Depot steno notebook. Looking at the fine nib, the first thing I really notice is I'm getting much more of the red lean here, which I wasn't expecting given the tone of this paper. We get no feather, we get no spread, we do get a little bit of shading. This paper has done especially well with a bunch of the finer nibs, and if you were to like the paper, then that's the kind of thing to keep an eye on, you know, just a mental note if you were to go for it. Looking at the medium, it is darker than we had with the fine, quite a bit darker. We get no feather, we get no spread. We get shading, sort of, in that it shows up. On the top line, when you look at the word hours, right in the middle, the RS gets quite a bit lighter. And track that down and look at the number two, where you see it's lighter at the top and darker at that crossover, where miles right next to that goes lighter to darker. So it can shade, but most of the words tend to come out very dark, like the word remains or changes. Looking at the stub nib, it is quite a bit darker than everything else on the page. We get no feather, 
we get no spread. We do get some shading going on. Now, the mediumite has it, and I didn't mention it. I did for the fine. There's definitely a red lean. In something about this paper is really bringing out that red much more than I saw before. The shading that's going on, look at that second line. The word the goes mid to light to very dark tone. Look at how line goes lighter to darker. Beautiful. Looking at the back of the page, we had nothing that bled through and touched the page underneath, and the ghosting is way under control. You can easily use the back of this page. While it's nice to find other inks in the same color family, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a pink ink by tag there, Cairo no Oto, Amayu Iro. Here is a shimmering green ink by Diatramentis, Heliogen Green Bronze. Here is an orange ink by Robert Oster, their peach. Here is a blue ink by Califolio Bosphor. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the fine nib. Slightly different tone than we've seen with some of the other papers. We get no real feathering, which is quite a shocker. It is a, a very good point for this ink. We get no spread, really. Another great point for this ink. Now, we're really not getting any kind of shading, but to be honest, we are way ahead from anything we ever expect on 20-pound copy paper. Looking at the medium nib, we get, you know, there's a couple of moments that look a little bit feathery, like the peas and apple. It does look a little bit thicker, so there is a little bit of spread as compared to how a Japanese medium normally writes. However, I think this is way under control and doing an amazing job. We don't get any shading, but we don't expect it. This is performing way above and beyond expectation. Looking at the stub nib, we get about the same tone that we had with the fine and the medium. Yes, we get some feathering. We actually get more feathering here than either of the others. We get a little bit of spread, but that's under control. I think you could use this. It's really going to come down to how well it did. Now, the feathering, I always just try to figure if it's manageable. As you get to the bottom of the writing sample, you're going to see the word constantly. You're going to see changing speed. It doesn't look good there. Looking at the back of the page, the most important thing is that none of it came through and touched the page underneath. And in fact, the ghosting that's going on here is way under control. Although I don't think you could use the back of the page if you wanted to, because you can see how deep the ink is getting into it. So what nib and pen do I think is going to give the best writing experience with this ink? Now, frequently when I'm using uh, an ink, there is usually one, maybe two other pens that get used that don't show up in the videos. Now, from the pens I used, which in this case was only the four for the video, I liked it the best from the Pelican M800, so I would say to go with a wet medium nib or a broad, because it is a Pelican, this is what I'm suggesting for this ink. Now, that's on nicer papers, and especially if it's an ivory tone, this is amazing. It gives great tone and no lack of shading the entire time, which is how I prefer to use this ink. I hope you got something out of this video, and if it leads to you wanting to try this ink when you purchase it, let the retailer know where you heard about it, whether it's me or any other channel. Thanks for watching.